everybody. Come on, give God a hand praise. All you people. Today, we thank God for all of you, amen, who are here with us, amen. amen, we thank God, we thank God for you, and ask that the Lord will bless you richly um, for your sacrifice this evening, amen, we will have a quick word of prayer, and then uh, we will go into our uh, lesson tonight, uh, praise God, I want to encourage you um, to continue uh, being faithful in the house. I know that there are some who are not feeling good. There are some that um, are uh, um, had to work. Amen. But nonetheless, uh, and some who may not be feeling good. I did get a message from Sister Regina. Um, her back is bothering her. Um, praise the Lord. So she is at home tonight. We will lift her up in prayer. Amen. Um, we thank God for her. Uh, praise the Lord. Yeah. We are going to go forward tonight. We're going to dip away from the book for just a minute. Um, amen. And try to pour something, amen, into you on tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, our Father, we do bless and magnify your name. Amen. God, we declare with our lips that there is none like you. Amen. Father, we thank you right now. God, we shout hallelujah. For hallelujah is the highest praise. Praise be to Yah. We bless you on tonight, Father, and thank you. Uh, for all that you have done. We thank you for all that you are doing. God, we give you praise right now because you are our, you are Father to us, God. And we are just grateful tonight for all that you have done, for all that you are doing, and for all that you are yet to do. We submit ourselves before you and humble ourselves in your presence and ask you to forgive us of all sins, God, the thoughts of sins of omission as well as commission, God, any wasted action, thought, or deed. Father, forgive us, God, and we confess that we have sinned and come short of your glory. And we ask, God, that you will forgive us and that you will cover our sins in the blood and wash us in the blood. Father, cast them as far away as the east is from the west and remember them no more. Lord, our desire is to bring you glory. Our desire is for you to be glorified in our lives, around our lives, and through our lives. May you get the glory. Father, in order for you to get the glory, Lord God, we have to continue to die. So, Lord, we say thank you, Father God, for the, the things that you have chosen to crucify this flesh. We thank you for life, Father God, and the lessons of life that are helping, Father, to crucify this flesh even more. We pray in your son Jesus' name that we would accept what you allow, Father God, in whichever way, hallelujah, Lord God, you choose, Father God, to crucify this, this flesh, Lord God. Help us to know that it is working for our good whether it be on the job, whether it be at home, whether it be people, places or things, situations, Father, whatever it may be, Father, we say thank you because it is working for our good. Lord God, help us to see the beauty, hallelujah, in everything that we endure on this earth, Father God, because we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are definitely working. So, Lord, work in us, work through us, Father God, and continue, Father God, to, to, to give us the strength to press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of the value of Christ Jesus. Help us, Father God, to continue, Heavenly Father, to reach for you, Father God, and to attain the goal, Father God. The end goal, Father God, is that we make it to heaven. We want to see you again. We want to see you, and we want to hear you say, well done, God. So we thank you right now for the lessons of this life that are helping to push us in, in, in more and more and more into your image and into your likeness. And we just give you praise on tonight, Father God. Hide us and continue to have your way in this house, Father. We pray, God, in Jesus' name, that we would continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, regardless of what comes our way, oh God, help us to choose you over our flesh and over our feelings. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we glorify you and thank you, God. Hallelujah, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We give you praise tonight. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. You can have your seats. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. Thank God for you. Amen. Who are here. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of Colossians and the third chapter. Colossians, the third chapter. Um, I just came in. I saw, I got a post-it on my desk. and It jumped out. And, and if, if, if the Lord 
would have it, and I know that he would. The end result cannot be attained unless our thinking changes. Amen. It's quiet, but I, I guess that's because it's only three and a half of y'all in um, our, our minds have to begin to mature, yes, sir. to shift, yes. and to grow up. Right. I know some of those mean the same thing, grow up, mature, um, but not necessarily because those there are those who have grown up physically but are still uh, immature uh, mentally. Right. Yeah. Mm. There are those who have, 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 have grown up mature physically, but mentally, spiritually, emotionally, they are still very much immature. They, they look 45, right? But their mentality is that of a 20-year-old, an 18-year-old. Because life happens, right? And things happen. And so tonight, just real quick, we're going to just, just talk about um, who's the center of our lives, and that is Jesus. But also, we'll talk a little bit about um, what we as believers um, the, the, the duty that we have um, as far as um, putting away um, with some old stuff. Yes, right. Yes, Amen. Amen. So in Colossians, the third chapter, uh, verse one, if you would follow, follow along uh, real quick, I'm going to just read one through five. Um, the Bible declares. Uh, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead. Somebody shout, I'm dead. I'm dead. Ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is he your life? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, okay, praise the Lord. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then ye shall, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. It says, mortify, therefore, your members. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Now, the concupiscence is craving or lust or desires, ungodly desires. That's what concupiscence uh, is. It's, it's what's forbidden. How many of you know that in our flesh, that, that what we tend to crave in our flesh are the things that are forbidden? Oh, uh, just y'all. All right, praise the Lord. Um, it, it's it's not the things that are readily accessible that are okay that we tend to to navigate towards. Case in point, if you go into a store and you're hungry um, and you see some fruit on one side, but on the other side uh, you see some donuts and some cupcakes, what are you more than likely to gravitate towards? Come on, y'all, don't act like that. Cupcakes and the donuts. Knowing, knowing, watch this, knowing that those cupcakes and donuts is the last thing that we need. Somebody said, hey, man. Hallelujah, right? That's the last thing that we need. Think about it. Fixing your lunch for work or going to get you some fast food. Come on now, here, help me, y'all. Or going to get you something, right? What are we going to do? We're going to neglect the fixing of the plate for a home of food, right? And we just think it in our minds. No, because I can go to uh, I can go to here, I can go to there, I can go to here, I can go to Five Guys, I can go to Taco John's, I can go to whatever, right? What's better for us? The home cooked meal. Right? So that's what he was talking about with evil concupiscence. Uh, um, all right? That's, that's lustful desires. That's the thing that is forbidden, the things that we should crave, or the things that we shouldn't desire. But that ain't what I wanted to talk to y'all about tonight. Um, praise the Lord. If ye then be risen, 
be risen. If you be risen, if you have been raised with Christ, somebody shout, that's me. That's me. How do we know that we have been raised with Christ? How do we, how can we tell that we have been raised with Christ? Well, number one is it ain't got nothing to do with us. It's what he did at the cross, right? He got up. And we know when he got up, we got up with him, right? So now, watch this, it, it was extended to us before we even came to him. Are you with me? It was extended to us. It's, it's been extended to all mankind, even though there are some who are of the flock that ain't even in the house yet. There's people on the other side of these doors that it has been extended to everybody in the world, right? Because it's not his will that any should be lost. That he came to seek and save that which was lost. So because he came to seek and to save that which was lost, think about where we once were, right? But then when we came into the knowledge, the saving knowledge of Christ, and confessed with our mouth the Lord Jesus and that God raised him from the dead, right? Believed in our hearts, right? When we came into that knowledge and understanding, the gift of life, the gift of risen life, the gift of eternal life, the gift of being now alive in Christ, the gift that was there all along for us, guess what? Now we have we have ascertained it. We have grabbed a hold of it, right? We have attained it. I'm sorry. We have attained that goal right now, right? So now that we have attained it, Paul is saying, ye then, if ye then be risen with Christ, if you, the people of God, the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones, believers, if we have been risen with Christ, right, we should now, instead of seeking the things of the flesh, or simply watch this, the mindsets of the flesh. Y'all know we've been in this thing. That's why we're here tonight. But, but, but now we should no longer seek those things. Now we should seek what? We should seek the things that are where? Above. So the problem that we have is that we're not physically above yet. Physically, we are still in the earth. Physically, we are still in the flesh, yeah. right? Physically, we still have situations that go on that do what? They test us. Oh, yeah. They test our gates, our spiritual aptitude. Yeah. They push our buttons. They, they, they yeah. hit us here, and, and when, we, when we lose the battle here, right, mm -hmm. everything else follows into what's going on here. Right. So Paul was telling them, if you then who have been risen, risen with Christ, seek those things, what? Above. That are above. Right? Let's stop and think about Jesus for a minute. When Jesus was here on the earth, right, he had those on the outer court, those on the inner court, and then he had those who are in the Holy of Holies, right? The Holy of Holies only consisted of Peter, James, and John. Then he had the, 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 those in the inner court, which were the other disciples, right? And in the inner court, there was one called who? Judas, right? Then he had those in the outer court, which were the scribes and the Pharisees and everybody else. So the scribes and the Pharisees tested him on a regular basis, right? He did not flinch. He didn't flinch. Why did he not flinch? Because his mind was not on the earth. His mind was on heaven. His mind was on doing whatever his father sent him here to do. That period. Period. Right? Nothing else. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying no matter if they're in the outer court, the inner court, or the holiest of holies, because either one in the holiest of holies uh, uh, got rebuked by him for trying to stop what he was trying to do. Peter, right? So no matter in this life, whether it's outer court, inner court, or the holiest of holies, as far as relationships and people I'm talking about right now, we should not allow anything, watch this, to pull our thoughts, to pull our mindset, to pull our heart, guard your heart, or out of the flow of the issues of life. We still in the vein, right? Nothing should pull me down out of that place and make me, watch this, be a bottom feeder. If, if, if I'm seated in the heavenlies with him, and if my mind is above, right? My mind is risen, I'm elevated, thank you Holy Ghost, I am no longer, watch this, in a dead state. I have been revived, I have been resuscitated, I have been brought back to life. I am better now 
than what I was then, right? Which means, listen, I don't got time for peasant stuff. So Kim said amen on that. The enemy's job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said that I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So if I really see, my mind is really seated in the heavens. If I'm seated in the heavens with him and my mind and my affections are above and not on this earth, then watch this. I need to keep and maintain a kingly and priestly and, 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 and heavenly mindset instead of that of a peasant. We want kingdom uh, blessing with peasant mentality. I heard somebody say the other day that they don't eat shrimp and stuff no more because because then the bottom feeders and woo 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 woo. And I didn't even go into scripture. The scripture said that if we, you know, if that's what we choose to eat, then that's what and, and everything was made clean. I remember Peter, right, right. he let the sheep down, and Peter showed him all this yeah. other stuff, right? That we are now able to eat, right? right. But people be so caught up. But this is the thing: the bottom feeders, they they taste real good. I promise I'm going somewhere. <laughs> it tastes good. Some shrimp and, and crab legs. Right? Hello, somebody. But with that bottom feeder mentality, right? It might feel good <coughs> to tell somebody how you feel. <coughs> but the words are bitter in your mouth. Because you know you shouldn't have said it. To think it, you 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 thought it, and you should have got rid of it. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Right? Get rid of it. I get out of there. Because if I if I tune in here too much. My body don't follow, my mouth don't follow into that bottom peasantry. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. All right, risen. Sunegiro, Sunegiro, to rouse, to rouse from death, to rouse from death. So he's saying, if you have been roused from death, Lazarus, come forth. If you would have got here a long time ago, he wouldn't have died. He ain't dead, he's sleeping. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus had to do what? Come forth, right? He's, it says it means to revive spiritually. So before Christ, we were dead in our trespasses and sins, right? We were dead in our trespasses and sins. But now that we are in Christ, we are new creatures, right? Right. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new, right? So we have been revived spiritually. There has been a spiritual revival that took place when? When we come on, Mama Rosie, talk to the people in the house. When we when we gave in, when we accepted what he gave, when we accepted what was already there. Hello. He didn't just decide today to save us. It was done at Calvary a long, 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 long time ago. We didn't get the memo. Because our minds, watch this, was in peasantry. Our minds were below. And the battle that we face now is, is that life still deals blows that our minds are not dealing with on a risen state or on a heavenly state or on a nature or a state that is above. It wants to handle those things back in peasantry. So spiritually, hallelujah, I can have my mind set on uh, the things I can be risen, amen, in heaven, hallelujah, uh, spiritually, but physically, I can still be acting like a peasant. I can still allow my, 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 my actions, 
my mouth, my, 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 my words, I can allow my, my thoughts still to be underneath, watch this, and below God's means for my life. Are y'all with me? It says now, what's up, huh? We are in Colossians chapter 3. We're not in the book tonight. That's all right. Why y'all didn't help them out? Colossians chapter 3. Tonight, we, 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 we dipping away from the book for a minute. All right? Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. That's where I'm at right now. So he says, watch this, that we have to, now we should be in resemblance to Christ. Yes, sir. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, <laughs> from pulpit to the parking lot, uh, resembling him, watch this, resembling him 100% of the time, we ain't there yet. Resembling him 85% of the time, most of us ain't there yet. Resembling him 65% of the time, most of us ain't there yet. Hello? Most of us, 50% of the time, eh, maybe. But guess what? Is it, is it predicated upon what life throws at you? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. It shouldn't be, but it is. Life will try to give, give you blows, watch this, to your flesh that will cause for you to have a, have a choice to make. Are you going to set your affections on things above? Or are you going to go and be, be, be a bottom feeder? Too often, our flesh, this flesh, if we could just be a hundred, this flesh rises up because we take our eyes, we take our focus off of him, and we start to pay attention to what's pressing us. Instead of what's pressing us, instead of, instead of us allowing the word to press back against it, instead of allowing his spirit to press back against it, we allow it to press against us, and we do like this. And by the time we do like this and do like that, it's too late. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying ignore it to a sense. Ignore it enough to cast it down and trust God with it. I'm, that's, I'm preaching better than y'all say amen. Somebody needs to write that down. Ignore it. Ignore it physically. But put a demand on him spiritually. If I ignore it and give it to God, right? Then I'm exalting God over it, pushing against me. Does that make sense? But too often, we, 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 it comes, it happens, and immediately, instead of us keeping our, our focus, and start to talk against that thing and get rid of that thing, cast that thing down, we turn and we look at that thing. And when we turn and look at it, that's when the problem starts. He says that we should be, that we are, we have been roused from the dead, that we have been revived spiritually in resemblance to. So we should be in resemblance, we should respond, amen, in resemblance to how God, how Jesus responded on the earth. That's why the, 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 the study, the study, study in Jesus' life is so important. Because we get a firsthand look of how our Lord and our Savior dealt with everything that we deal with. But Pastor, that was that was it was a different time. Ain't nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new that, that he went through that we ain't dealing with right now today. Hello? Nothing. He says, if you're going to be risen with Christ, sune hero, if you are risen with Christ, if you've been roused, if you have been revived spiritually, if you are now in resemblance 
to Christ, he says, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Seek, zeteo, to seek. That means to search for, literally or figuratively, to worship God. To seek means to worship, right? So it means to plot against life. So we have to literally plot when we are when we are seeking God, we are plotting. We are plotting to be in his presence. We are plotting to be closer to him. We are plotting, amen, to, 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 to get into the, to the presence of God. We're seeking him. All right? We are going after him. We are desiring him, endeavoring him, inquiring after him. We are, that's, that's seeking. That means that we are chasing after him. All right? So he's saying, chase after those things that are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Uh, I've got a scripture for you. Ephesians 2 and 6. Ephesians 2 and 6 says, okay, let me go back. Ephesians 2 and 1, and you have been quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So that goes along with where we are right now, Colossians 3 and 1. We used to be dead in trespasses and sins, but we have been quickened. We have been made alive. We have been, been changed. There's been something different that has happened in our lives. Who are dead and such as sin, where in time past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. That was us. Hello, somebody. It says, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of our minds. So it wasn't just our flesh, it was, a, a, it was actually our minds that were in trouble back then, too. Before Christ. So this tells us, watch this, that just because now that I'm in Christ, hallelujah, uh, and, 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 and I may not, it may not be to that magnitude anymore, but I still have to be on, on guard with my mind. I still, this, my mind still, watch this, how many of you can tell the truth saying the devil that your, your mind still wants to gravitate towards the old you? And sometimes you may find yourself mentally in, in, in thinking like the old you, responding like the old you, acting like the old you. Hello? You might even find yourself in an old place that you used to go. And you'd be like, what, what am I doing? Oh, y'all too safe. Y'all ain't ever been So that's why he mentioned the mind here, too. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, somebody shout, but God. Who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins. Hello, that's past tense. He has quickened us together with Christ. By grace we are saved. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And has raised us up together. This is where we want to be. He has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Listen, we need to remember that we are no longer bottle thieves. We are no longer peasants. And I use that lightly. I don't know if I use it. That's not me a peasant. That's not what I'm saying. I'm painting a picture. Trying to paint a picture so that you can get a clear understanding of what I'm saying, all right? Uh, we are no longer dead in our trespasses and sins. We have been made alive. When we were dead in those trespasses and sins, there was no hope for us. Hello? There was, there was no hope for us. We didn't have nothing to look forward to. We kept chasing the same thing, doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different outcome. Hello? Only to find that there was nothing different until we did something different. Until we accepted him as Lord and Savior, right? And gave him the reins. Life will happen, though, that will cause for us to want to go back and snatch the reins from God. And that is something that we cannot afford to do. And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'm going to go back now to Colossians because that's where I really want to be. And I ain't even got to the good part yet. Praise God. He says, so I gave you the, the words for risen with and seek. Zateo is seek and sunegiro is uh, be risen with. All right. He says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Our affection, watch this, phroneo, 
That means to exercise the mind. That is, entertain or have a sentiment or opinion. To have your mind fixed in a certain direction. To be like. To be of one. To be of the same. So let this mind, Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. We need now more than ever before to have the mind of Christ. How can we have the mind of Christ? We have the mind of Christ by having his word hid in us. We have the mind of Christ, watch this, by spending time, amen, in prayer before the Lord. Amen. So that his thoughts now become our thoughts, not our thoughts becoming his thoughts, amen, that's backwards. We need the mind of Christ. Watch this. If I have the mind of Christ, then when somebody does something that I, I don't like, watch this, I'm more than likely to see, amen, that, that they didn't mean it that way, or I'm more than likely to think the best of the situation instead of thinking the worst of the situation. But watch this. I told y'all that stuff comes, watch this, to get our focus off of God, to get our focus off of heaven, to get our minds out of the mind of Christ, right? And to set our affections on everything else that's going on. To, instead of us being one with God, instead of us being one with Jesus, the enemy is coming or is using, thank you, Holy Ghost, because we blame everything on the devil. But sometimes, amen, there's just a person, amen, that the enemy is using to come at a moment, at that moment, right? And to get you off. But it's really not the person. It's the spirit behind the person. That person didn't know you was having a bad day. That person didn't know that you was struggling. That person didn't know that your family is fighting for their life right now. That person didn't know that you got more bills than you got money. That person didn't know none of that. Right? But they came at that moment and at that time. So all of this stuff is pressing against you. You trying your best to keep this and to cast it on him because he cares for you. But then this person comes out of your blind side. And you was already on the wish back. Right? Is that how that happens? Well, that's just how it happens for me. That's why it is important for us to keep our minds, to set our minds on things above, not on earthly things. What are some earthly things that we have our minds focused on? Drugs? Alcohol? Money? Bills? Jobs? Right? Material things? Everything that's on this earth. We all live in the earth. So everything that's of the earth is trying, watch this, to keep our minds and our focus off of God. Is it? Well, pastor, these are real things. Absolutely positively, they are real things in this earth. But we are no longer of this earth. Hello? But somewhere, the memo got lost. And we are still living like we are of this earth. Pastor, but I'm in the earth. I got to work a job. The job ain't your source. The job is a resource. That the source has given you. So if the source gave you that resource, guess what? He got another resource better than that one. He got somebody somewhere with substance. Amen. With you on that mind. He got another plan. But you got to stay connected. And keep your thoughts, your emotions, your affections on heaven. Keep them elevated. Watch this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Keep them elevated above this earth. It's a sad commentary when a believer who is seated in the heavenlies with him, who we say we have the mind of Christ, right? 
and we allow the things of this earth to take us out. Look at the contradiction. If, if I'm a boxer, right, and I'm a heavyweight, right, and I'm about to fight a welterweight, It should clearly not be a fight. It's not, fair. Amen. It's not a fair fight when you look at the weight difference. Right? right? right. Think of yourself as a heavyweight. Come on now. Air. Come on. Everything that the enemy is throwing against you is featherweight. <laughs> Why? Because he's God's already defeated all principalities and powers. Yeah. And if we suit it in the armor of God, watch this. Then nothing shall by any means hurt us. There's nothing that can hurt us. Not death, not light, not principalities, not powers, not the rules of darkness that are not in this world. Nothing. Nothing can separate us. Nothing can hinder us unless we give way to it, unless we turn and look at it, unless we give it our attention and take our focus off of heaven. Yes, life is happening. Yes, life is going on. Yes, there are ups and downs in this life, but guess what? The only one that can bring us through it uh -huh. is God. Uh -huh. And why take my eyes off of the one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask for things according to the power works within me to look at old Sukkot and what he tried to do? What I'm saying is, is that keeping my eyes on God, keeping my eyes focused and fixed on heaven and in his word, regardless of what's going on, will help me to not give attention to something, watch this, that don't even matter. Why does it not matter? Because the only person that knows my beginning from my end and my end from my beginning and everything in between is, is God. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, who for the glory that was set before him, watch this, he endured, he despised rejection. Hello. And so since that's the case, my focus has to shift from everything in this world and how the world reacts and responds, how the world taught me to react and respond. My focus now has to be on how did Jesus respond. There was a saying going back around in the early 2000s and the 90s, late 90s. What would Jesus do? WWJD. What would Jesus do? No. What did Jesus do? That's what we need to focus on. What did Jesus do? When Satan tempted him, what did he do? He defeated Satan with the word of God. Hello? He reminded himself constantly and the disciples of what his father told him to do. He kept going up. Regardless of what came at him, he kept going up. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying we got to stop looking at this level, amen, as far as the things that come and attack us now. Keep going to this level. Keep going up. There was a song we used to sing, I woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on Jesus, and he said, uh, it ain't no harm to keep your mind. Guess what? We need to go back to that. If we keep our minds stayed on him, watch this. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a stand against him. If we stay on the offensive, watch this, then when, when the attack comes, we we already on the offense, so we already saw it. We already saw it. So now our response is not coming from a place of, of, of get back. Our response is coming from a place of I'm on the attack. Hello, somebody. A good boxer doesn't only focus on their defense not getting hit. They focus on counterattacks, too. They're taught, amen, that when a punch is thrown, that they can counter a punch by dipping under or rolling to a certain side or sliding over and doing something different. It's not just about offense, but they also teach them a good defense. But in, in between the offense and the defense, there's what's called a counter. Have y'all ever watched the UFC where they kick and punch and all of that? Right? And sometimes the dude will go and try to do a spinning kick, 
And, and he know he better hurry up and get his head back around because if he catch it, he's in trouble. <laughs> Why y'all acting like that? Right? Or if he do one of them flying fish, <laughs> how they do it, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about when they do the flying ground, ground fish, right? If he don't get that head on the swivel, his next thing he could be looking at the birdies. He catches us off guard. And after he catches us off guard, he reaches in. Y'all right? right? Look at Matthew 16, 23. I'm almost done. Hmm? Matthew 16, 23. Go to 22. Then Peter, no, go to 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. Hold on. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me he was telling them and showing them why and what he had to do, which was go to be ridiculed, mistreated, dogged out, hello, and killed. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's going to happen to you too. Look at somebody else, neighbor, it's going to happen to you too. But watch this. It didn't take him by surprise. He knew what it was. That he, he knew he was going to have to suffer some stuff. That's what he came here for. There's a song that says, Born just to die. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. And now he lives inside of me. That's what it's saying, right? Do y'all listen to gospel music at all? My brothers, you got my back? Amen. Praise the Lord. He was born just to die. But watch this. He knew that. He knew his assignment. The problem is, is that we have been in the earth and we don't know our assignment. Society told us that we were born for A, B, and C. Then we come into a, a saving knowledge of Jesus, and we find out that that's not what we were born for. Watch this. And we're trying to fulfill his purpose for us with that revelation of who we're supposed to be. Double-mindedness. The enemy will cause, tries to make us think that we can, we can, we can, you know, that, that it's okay that we just stay right here. But we want to be blessed up here. Amen. Right? right? We want we want the we want the mountaintop experience, but we want to live in the valley. Right? And so what has to change is the way we view ourselves and see ourselves, that's why we need to know what God says about us. We need to know what he thinks about us. We need to know what he went through, what Jesus went through, in order to help us to get through. All right, let me get on through. He says, Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he, Jesus, turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. He, it wasn't Peter. It was the enemy who has now caused for Peter to get in, try to get in the way of what Jesus was sitting here to do. That's why I said it's not the person. It's the enemy behind the person that's causing for that person's outlook on what needs to happen or causing for that person at the time to be used against you. And if you play the game with that spirit behind the person, amen, and take your eyes off of God, it will cause for you to miss it. It'll cause 
exhausts you to miss it. He told me, you behind me. Listen, then Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Now, let me get on down through here. I ain't even get to the second page yet. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Uh, go to Romans 8 and 5. Just some scriptures. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Y'all see that? For those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit have their mind set on the things of the spirit. Now the mindset of the flesh is death. That's where we came from. Our, our, our mind, our affections, our heart. They were set on the things of the flesh, which means we were what? Spiritually dead, right? Yeah. All right. But the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. So the reviving, the spiritual reviving now has given us life and peace. How many of you remember when you were, did y'all see the picture I posted of myself? The old picture I posted of myself, that is it. Amen. You can see how rough and rugged and no peace. I mean, no. just brutally ugly. Seeing ravish. And then the now, a now picture. Come on now. Say that. Life and peace. There was no peace because I didn't know Jehovah Shalom. Come on. Hello? And watch this. I thought I, was, I, thought I had it going on. You couldn't tell me nothing. What you laughing at, dog? <laughs> you couldn't tell me nothing. I thought I looked good. Swore somebody wanted my crusty lips set. I don't weed out of smoke. Hello? I knew I was the stuff that I had going on. Money in my pocket. Good clothes and gear on. Look at a hot mess. Spiritually dead. No, you remember them days. Don't, <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> but he says that the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. The mindset of the flesh is hostile to God. Hello. It is hostile to God because God it is hostile to God because it does not submit to God's law. He said, they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Ugh, I need to get through this. <laughs> For ye are dead. So we have to set our affection on the things that are above. On things that are of God, on the things, amen, that are upwards, that are high, all right? The things of heaven, not the things of this earth, all right? It says, verse 3, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Hello, somebody. We are dead, amen. And now, amen, our thoughts, our, our, our minds, our bodies, watch this, the way that we live now, should should be, watch this, dead to our old nature yes. and alive to Christ. Amen. Amen. We die. We die. We are dead. Apophnesco. 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 Right? To die. It means to die. To be dead. A death. To lie a dying. It means to literally be laying there dying. So our lives right now, watch this, we are to live our lives, watch this, dying to the flesh. Dying to everything from that nature, from that side. Man, this is good stuff right here. 
everything in the world we should be dead to. It should no longer dictate to us. It should no longer push buttons. It should no longer get on our nerves. It should no longer bother us. It should no longer, watch this, make us. What's the first thing you say when somebody get on you and start hitting on you? You say something or do something, you shouldn't have been. You say, see, you done made me or you gonna make me. Uh, Y'all don't say that? Come on, I'll point you out a little bit. Sure. Keep looking at them fingernails. You, you gonna make me. Blah, blah, blah. Is that what we say? We blame other people. For us responding, or if we blame situations or circumstances, whatever it is, on us responding in a dead nature, a spiritually dead nature that we have overcome through Jesus Christ. We give things too much power over us. If somebody can make you act a certain way, that thing has become your God. That thing has power over you. Hello. Hello. You have given that thing or that person the reins, and anytime they want to, they can say, "Dance, puppet." Go, Charlie Brown. Anytime. Do y'all get that? I'm, I'm talking to myself too. That's why it's so good for me. Our old lives should have no more power over us. Our own lives should have no more power over us. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. And write this nugget down. My understanding has to constantly mature in Christ. My understanding has to constantly mature in Christ. My mindset has to constantly be matured in Christ. My knowledge of Christ has to constantly be matured in Christ. Which means that I need to continue to study to show myself approved. I need to continue to feast on this word. I need to continue to hide this word in my heart. Look at 1 Corinthians 13, 11. He says this. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. What is Paul saying right there? There was a time in my life that I was immature. I was childish. And that's all that I could do was be childish and immature. Because that's I was a child. So being a child, I can't expect my child, 13, 14, 15 years old, to have an understanding of me being 46. Because he's a child. He's immature. He doesn't get it. Right? However, he said, but when I became a man, he said, I put away childish things. So I used to play G.I. Joe, talk to Trump's, out in the dirt in part of square at the circle. When we had them, them real metal dump trucks, uh, top of trucks, the one that hurt, when you hit them, now they got that plastic stuff. They were still for real. You rolled on down the hill, that truck was keep on going. Dents and dings in them, but they would not be destroyed. Hello? We put truck, uh, all kind of dirt in them and rocks and brrr, run around and get ourselves all skinned up, right? What do I look like now at 46? Out playing in the, in the circle with some dump trucks by myself. <laughs> Somebody gonna come to people, they gonna come to take me to get evaluated. <laughs> Sir, are you all right? <laughs> There's a crazy grown man out there. Right? right? Paul's saying, look, he said, when I was a child, my understanding was that of a child. My mindset was that of a child. My thought process was that of a child. My ways were that of a child. He said, but now that I'm a man, he said, I put away childish things. I cannot continue to operate as a child with my understanding 
of life and my understanding of who God is mm -hmm. on the level of a child anymore. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We can't stay where we were or, or we're at the place of, of salvation. We can't stay in that place. We got to continue to mature, which means, watch this, the way that I deal with life, the way I deal with circumstances, the way I deal with situations that may come up, I cannot continue to deal with them on a childish or immature level. I'm doing myself a disservice. And all the justification in the world ain't going to help me to mature. Y'all know that's what we try to do. We try to justify it. Right? Yes, sir. Not y'all. That's the other church. Praise the Lord. He said, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. I'm getting there, y'all. <sighs> so good. Look at John 1.12. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Watch this. As many as received him, to them he gave them power. Power to do what? The book of John. To become the sons of God. Right? right? So, it wasn't anything other than our believing in what he did for us at Calvary. Mm -hmm. Somebody go to Romans 10 now real quick. I'll show you. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Read. Ten, you said 9 and 10? Yep, chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart. Oh, wait a minute. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and the, the second one was what? Shall believe in thine heart. And shall believe in your heart. What did John 1 to 12 say? As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We believe, right? Yeah. But guess what? He's given us the power to be the sons of God. So the sons of God, watch this. If we are the sons of God, watch this, then shouldn't we be overcoming some stuff? Oh, yeah. We should be yeah. overcoming everything. Why? Because we're more than conquerors from him who loves us. Right? right? right. No weapon formed against us is going to prosper, right? Right. right? We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, right? So then, in the battle for those things that try to test us, or the battle, amen, that we go through or are dealing with on a daily basis that try to steal our mindsets away from him, right? Those things don't have power over us. We give them power. Think of it like this. Remember what, what Jesus said. He said, if they knew what hour the strong man would have came and tried to rob their house, then they wouldn't have let him do it. I'm paraphrasing, right? right? So imagine, watch this, imagine you not being on guard, but you know that somebody's going to try to break in your house. You're going to be ready for them. Right? right? I'm the, the door is unlocked. So I'm kicking you out of home. I promise you, you, you will run back up out of there. Right? right? So why don't we know that the enemy is coming for you? He's coming for you. He's coming to get you off your square. He's coming to get your eyes off of Christ. He's coming to get your focus off of God. He's coming. Period. If he ain't coming, then that's because he already got you. Hello? If he ain't bothering you, that means he got you. Right? 
Romans 6, 3 through 8. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Stop. Your old nature is buried. It's dead. It does not exist. It should not exist. Hello? Whenever we let the old man out, it's like we go. We go dig him up. Have y'all saw uh, the Justice League when they went and woke Superman up after he was dead? Yeah. And he beat all of them up? <laughs> he beat the brakes off of them, right? Yeah. What y'all think our old nature wants to do? Wreak havoc. When we give it life again, he wants to wreak havoc. Tell me I'm, 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 I ain't telling the truth. Yeah. Think about it. He will wreak havoc, and then he'll leave you alone, and you'll be stuck in the midst of the chaos like Man, how in the world did I get here? Look back over at that grave that you dug up. Come on, stand to your feet. Y'all all right, come on, give God a hand for you. Thank you. Gracious God, Father, we bless your name tonight. We praise you, Father, and give you honor and glory and say thank you, Lord. Thank you for this word tonight. We ask God that you will help us to remember, God, that we have to mortify the deeds of this flesh. We have to crucify this flesh. We have to continue, Father God, to uh, seek you, Father God, in all things. We repent for the times that we chose us. We chose our feelings. We chose this flesh over you. And we ask you to forgive us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we lift you up right now, and we glorify you. And we just ask, God, that you will help us, Father, to continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To you be glory both now and forever. Father, we are in need of you like never before. God, we believe that we are your sons. And we know, Father God, that we, those that are led by the Spirit of God, are the sons of God. So we ask that you will lead us by the power of your Spirit. Father God, that you will help us to deny ourselves. Father God, help us, dear God, to uh, deny this flesh. God, help us to deny our flesh, to take up our crosses, to follow after you, God with everything that we have in Jesus' name. Father, I pray right now a blessing for those uh, that were online tonight. I pray a special blessing over their lives, God. I am grateful for all of those who are uh, connected to this ministry, Lord, and just ask your will to be done in, around, and through their lives. I pray, Father, for those in the house tonight, Father God, that you will bless them indeed, dear God. Be with them, Lord. Protect them, guide them, and direct them, Lord, their steps in your word. And God, may you continue to be glorified in every single thing that we say and do. Father, we love you, we bless you, and praise you, and we lift you up on high, dear God, and we glorify your holy and righteous name. Father God, teach our hands toward God, and hide, our, hide us high in the mountains, Lord God. Set our feet high in the mountains like hinds feet, God, and help us to not be moved by what the devil says or does. Father, we want to continue, dear Lord, to mature. We want to continue to grow. And God, in order for us to do so, Lord God, we have to deny ourselves and tell us no. We pray, Father, that we will continue to crucify this flesh. And Lord, we ask also that we would accept the things that you allow, the things that you choose, Father God, to get us into a better position. We thank you right now, God, that you know what's best. We thank you, Lord, that you know what it's going to take. And we just ask, Lord God, that your will be done. Father, we surrender. We submit ourselves to your will, to your way, and to your authority. And we plead the blood of Jesus over our homes, our families, our lives, Lord. And just, Lord, we ask God that you will just restore, that you will heal and deliver, and that you will continue, Father, to be glorified from our lives. In your precious Son, Jesus' name, Lord, we praise you, we glorify you, and we thank you right now, God, in advance 
for yeah. what it is that you are about to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Listen, grace and peace, God bless you.